Hello, 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 everyone. 2011 was a year in time. Okay, let's do number 10. Cars 2 made $559 million worldwide. It made 191.4 domestically. Foreign was 368. So I did not watch this movie for this video uh, because uh, I hate this movie. It's the worst <laughs> Pixar movie by a mile. Yeah, it is. It's terrible. F tier. <laughs> the low F tier. It was a complete departure from what the original Cars was about, and it's a waste of time. There's not really much to say about Cars 2. It's just stupid and boring, and I, I ne I'm never seeing it again, not even for content. I just, do <laughs> I just don't care. Did you watch it for this video? Yes, sir. <laughs> You're brave. Okay. <laughs> Number nine, the Smurfs made $563.7 million worldwide, 142.6 million dollars domestic and 421 foreign so uh smurfs is Ugh. also in the <laughs> f tier i almost did it's above cars <laughs> is it i have it above cars i have it high f i don't know i guess watching cars 2 would have helped but i just didn't want to do it so i guess smurfs <laughs> but like if I had already seen Smurfs, would I have watched it again for this video? That is the question. So, I, I mean, I don't know. Well, I kind of liked some of the voice acting, even though they all look crazy. Like, it does not look natural at all. Bro, they look fucking horrifying. Yeah, they're very scary. So, I think the Smurfs is one of the most unoriginal films of uh, ever, probably. It does the CGI live-action crossover with the generic human character. The human character is in a corporate job with a shitty boss, and he learns the value of family, even though he's a workaholic. There's a prophecy that only comes true true because they tried to avoid it. The villain wants to become the most powerful thing just because. Uh, New York residents spending an unrealistic amount of time in Times Square. There's a rambunctious chase sequence. The narration that starts the film transitions into the reason why the narration is there so the audience can be like, oh, that's smart. And then they ignore the fact that the film starts off in a completely bullshit way. There's a scene that clearly existed as a result of a corporate email email thread trying to appeal to the youths. In this case, it was Neil Patrick Harris and the Smurfs playing guitar hero Aerosmith, and somehow the Smurfs knew the lyrics to walk <laughs> this way. Yeah. There's a black sheep character that proves himself in the most predictable way possible. There's a damsel in distress, and that's it's basically all I have to say about this movie. It's bad. Number eight, The Hangover 2 made $586.7 million worldwide, 254.4 domestic, 332.3 foreign. Okay. They don't make movies like this anymore. Just going to say that. They used to make comedies, and now everything is woke, and now you can't make comedies <laughs> anymore. All right. So, predictably, The Hangover 2. <laughs> <laughs> F tier. <laughs> I'm putting, I'm going to be crazy. I'm putting it in the A. No, I'm not putting it in the A tier. I'm putting it in the low D tier because there was this one moment I chuckled at a little bit and I said, haha. And I was like, okay, it's not trash like the other two movies. It is trash, but it's not the lowest form of trash. Even though this movie is the exact same thing as the first one, I still do think it had that one moment that I forgot about. People like Zach Galifianakis' character in these movies, and I don't know why, because he's just a terrible character. He's unfunny. He's annoying. He's annoying. It's so, he's so weird. The point is that he's a man baby and he can't grow up. Ha ha ha. Like, I get it. But like, he's just a villain. He's a <laughs> villain. I don't, I don't care about this character at all. And it's not even like, you know, the, the Walter White thing where he's a bad person, but he's interesting. In this case, he's just a bad person and I don't care. There's a trans joke in here. Well, not just one, but there's a billion trans jokes and they're not like making fun of things that are funny about being trans. You can make fun of anybody if you know the things that are funny about their own collective experience and the joke in this movie is i made love to a man with boobies that's funny right <laughs> You can't make them like this anymore. This is peak comedy. True. I guess it's 2011. Things were different, but like you're adults. I don't know. 
<laughs> I don't know. In the credit photo album sequence, they pay the most attention to it as well. They show it like over and over again. They're like, isn't this funny? <laughs> like <laughs> Todd Phillips is a hog. He's just a hog and he's not funny. And like you said, it has the same plot points from the first film, but with an even more insipid justification to exist with uh, really extravagant locations. And those locations are presented mostly well. I mean, it's an F tier movie, but it's not as bad as the other two that we just talked about, but it's still bad. And uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you sound tired. <laughs> I feel like thinking about this movie just makes me tired in general. I hope we don't have to watch it again. Maybe someone in the comments is going to be like, you guys should do a commentary on the Hangover movies and then we'll be obligated to. No, we're not going to do it. But... No, we're not going to do it. <laughs> Number seven, Fast Five. Oh, man. Family generated $626 million worldwide, 209.8 domestic, 416.3 foreign so fast five is in the c tier for me Ooh, you're gonna be like glenn what the hell go ahead i'm putting fast five in the s tier are you fucking serious <laughs> i'm dead ass i thought you were gonna put it in the a tier i was like all right fine i get it this man said s tier all right do i want to put it in the b tier you shouldn't be influenced by my tier. You should follow your heart. For clarity, we, we saw Fast Five together a couple days ago because we're making a Fast and Furious commentary like we did a couple years ago. But I had a really good time watching it. It's just that the the third act was kind of lame. Uh, whatever. B tier. B tier. I'm doing it. B tier. You win. <laughs> B tier. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> <laughs> it was you can't so beat funny. Family. It was so fun. It's so good. I love, I love Fast Five so much. Like once they get past the stuff that ties it to the fourth film and then the rock is introduced he whoops all their candy asses and they went to brazil this is brazil and it was cool and <laughs> there's a vast improvement like in terms of quality aesthetically and just in terms of the fun it and it's the crazy. acting and the character like everything is improved in this movie compared to literally every movie before it it is the best in the franchise so far it's crazy it was cool it's the avengers of the fast and furious movies <laughs> okay <laughs> number six kung fu panda 2 made 665.6 .6 million dollars worldwide 165.2 domestic and 500.4 foreign. Good lord. That's crazy, actually. Oh my god. It's the second biggest discrepancy between domestic and foreign on this list. What are you, uh, where are you putting Kung Fu Panda 2? I think I'm putting Kung Fu Panda 2 on the B tier. Yes, also in the B tier, above Fast Five. Sorry. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I, I don't know about that one. But <laughs> but I was pleasantly surprised with this movie. When I first saw it, however many years ago, I did not like it at all. And I was like, just forgetful about it. I was like, whatever, there are more movies out there I can watch. But rewatching it, I was like, whoa, this is kind of good. I was shocked. I thought I would like it more on a second watch, but I didn't. I think that Shen, although he is a psycho and uh, the the prophecy that gets him so pressed you know ends up destroying him but like overall as a character i think he's just too one note i like poe as a character i think his journey in this film and the way that they approach the themes of family family i think it goes in a really good direction i loved the 2d animation for the flashbacks the introduction to the idea of inner peace was really funny uh it's visually dynamic I don't know why Seth Rogen is in these movies. <laughs> <laughs> Getting that paycheck. There was a really funny joke, I guess, with the pressure point where they try to make someone drink something. Uh, I just wrote down a note. I don't remember the context of it, but it made me laugh. And this wild ass cliffhanger at the end. Which was great, to be honest. I haven't seen Kung Fu Panda 3, so I don't know what happens, but I'm excited to peep. Number five, Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol made $694.7 million worldwide. 209.3 domestic, 485.3. Where are you putting Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol? I'm putting it in the b tier the low b tier under kung fu panda 2 for me i am putting mission impossible ghost protocol in the c tier uh, wow. Yeah, I know. This is going to be the hot take of the video. Yeah, this is the popular one. This is the game changer, like Fast Five. Yeah, this is the Fast Five of the series, Heike. 
because uh, they took like a five year hiatus <laughs> between the third one yeah. and the fourth one. Yeah. And Tom Cruise was like, I should try to kill myself more. So he went to the tallest building and did that cool stunt. But I think I really liked it at first. And I still do like it, but it's not that great. There are like two or three pretty good sequences in the film. But other than that, the visuals aren't that great. They get much better as the series goes on. Like I could watch the Kremlin hallway thing and then the Burj Khalifa sequence and then I could be done, to be honest. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. There are better Mission Impossible movies, I think. There are 100%. And there are worse Mission Impossible movies. <laughs> Definitely. With like every location, everything is an aerial font. I'm pretty sure they have a specific font for these movies, like the titles and stuff, and they just didn't go with that. They were like, nah, fuck it. Whatever the default setting is on Premiere Pro, we'll just do that. Maybe they were crunched for time. Who knows? Yeah, I'm sorry that we're not like going goo goo gaga over this movie, but it's just like... It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> There's two really good sequences in it, and Paula Patton, you know, a wooga. Why <laughs> the hell isn't she in the other movies? I did think it was kind of weird that Tom Cruise gets to kiss her, because he's like also the producer of the film. I don't know. Kind of sus to me. I always think that's weird. Number four, Twilight Saga Breaking Dawn Part 1 made $712.2 million worldwide. Good lord. Yeah, (laughs) $281.2 million domestic and $430.9 million foreign. So, where are you putting Breaking Dawn (laughs) Part 1? I'm putting Breaking Dawn on the high D tier. Uh, same. Yay, nice. I think this is the best Twilight movie. Better than the first one? Yes, sir. This one is uh, more entertaining. And this one had me like screaming at some parts. I was like, what the hell? And I was like, oh, this is cool a lot. So, okay. They're all terrible, but this is the best to be. I I feel like the adaptation of a book series that gets turned into a movie, like the part one finale, they're all the same. All setting up to the part two, basically. Yeah, they're all set up, but they're so boring. Like just (laughs) useless scenes that sure in a book would be fine, I guess. But in a movie, like I don't care. I think this one felt more contained, to be honest. I felt like I liked that aspect of it a lot more than the other ones. If you watch them all in a row, maybe you'll have a better understanding because that's what I did, but maybe I'm also crazy. I don't know. Yeah, I think you are crazy. (laughs) (laughs) I just didn't care. Even about Bella, like they were all like, oh, this isn't supposed to happen. But then she's like, yeah, this is great. I'm doing this. Even though she literally looks like a Holocaust victim, like at certain points. (laughs) Oh, hell no. She's just being, she does. She's like being emaciated by the baby and you can literally see her bones popping out and (laughs) she literally looks like a skeleton. That's how like deprived of nutrition she looks. (laughs) Deprived of nutrition nutrition oh hell no where do you want them boss on either side of the aisle what aisle do none of you have vision i was just checking (laughs) for cold feet mine are toasty warm last night was the best night of my existence if it's a boy ej edward jacob i audibly barked when she said that there are a lot of bad lines in this but we go to brazil so that's cool brazil you never saw the second one right no i'm going to for the next video Yeah, you are. You definitely are. (laughs) The wolves talking was hilarious. Oh, my God. (laughs) The CGI baby was hilarious. And uh, Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides made $1 billion. $241 million domestic. So, D tier. Above Twilight. I am also putting it above Twilight in the D tier. Wow. What's the point of even having two different (laughs) tier lists? I guess you put Fast Five in the S tier. It definitely is. (laughs) (laughs) The first time I saw Pirates of the Caribbean 4 was on my first date ever. Went to go. Ever in your life? Wow. I picked Pirates 4 because it's the longest movie that was playing that weekend. I did not see the movie when I saw it, and (laughs) I saw it now. Hot take. They're made well at times. Like, I enjoy some of the practicality with them. The costumes are nice. Some of the CG is good. Some of it is terrible. And I just don't find it entertaining. They're kind of just boring as fuck. Okay. I don't know if you feel this way, but like the color in this movie is so faded and gross. Kind of like puke disgusting. I don't know. (laughs) Puke. Okay, so I haven't seen Dead Man's Chest or World's End, but I have seen the first film. And I feel like not having Orlando Bloom and Keira Knightley in this movie was kind of a mistake, but they're 
presence is kind of just like a void on this movie. <laughs> no, they, they need to be in all of them, honestly. Didn't really care for it. Like, if we're going to make blockbusters that are boring, at least make them like this movie where they're like kind of well made. When we talked earlier about the box office discrepancy between domestic and foreign, uh, this had the biggest domestic and foreign discrepancy. Number two. Transformers Dark of the Moon made $1.1 billion worldwide, $352.3 million domestic, and $771.4 million foreign. Transformers Dark of the Moon, C tier. You're going to think I'm crazy. Oh my god, go ahead. I'm putting this movie in the A tier. This guy. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. This is hog cinema at its finest, and it was one of the greatest experiences I've ever had in a theater. This is the best Transformers movie, in my opinion, even though it's stupid. I feel like Transformers 1 and 3, they're those movies in my heart that I will always love no matter what. Okay. I love when shit goes boom. It's so fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is probably the best Transformers movie in the Michael Bay continuity, but way too long. It's super long, and then the end, like, just comes so fast. Yeah, it ends suddenly. He kills Sentinel Prime, or whatever the fuck his name is, and then he kills Megatron, and then he's like, we have to be friends with the humans, and then you hear Chester say, do you feel cold and lost in desperation? <laughs> Shout out to Chester. And then it just ends. I was like, oh, okay. I feel like every Linkin Park song in these no. movies, oh, you don't like it? Oh, man. <laughs> what I've done is S tier, New Divide is B tier, this song, D tier, okay? What I've done, yeah, definitely is like top tier, the best thing ever. Speaking of music, the first note that I have was about the score, which they obviously took from The Dark Knight. Holy God, the temp <laughs> score is awful. It's not even like they tried to hide it, like the same yeah. elements are there, the same sort of sound is sort of there, like the, with the Joker theme, like that rising drone. The first shot after the prologue is Rose huntington whatever her name is uh it's her butt and her feet we get that infamous scene of patrick dempsey talking about the car and the curves and whatever overall i feel like her character is kind of the worst part about this movie because she's obviously where michaela would have been if michaela was still in the she movies she call someone a nazi or something like that yeah <laughs> <laughs> and she's like driven and successful and they're trying to get married but if they were gonna remove michaela i feel like we we should have just started with Sam alone and then we can watch him fall in love again because there's like two scenes with Carly in the beginning and they're already talking about the word love. So how can we even root for this relationship? I'm pretty sure in the second film, there was like a whole thing about Sam not telling Michaela that he loved her, even though he was obsessed with her for literal years. We don't even know this Carly person. Like even at the end when he's like, I need to go in there and save her when he's like giving that speech to Tyrese. Like if that was for Michaela, I'd probably cry, you know, but like, I don't know this person. But the explosions were cool. The editing actually isn't that bad. And we can actually see most of the shots fully realized from beginning to end, which in this era of Michael Bay movies is, you know, like a unicorn. I mentioned before about the temp score, The Dark Knight, but they also used the Two Towers interpolation of Requiem for a Dreams theme where Sam, Bumblebee, and Simmons encounter the Decepticons on the highway. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, there's not an original bone in this soundtrack's body at all. Sentinel quoted Spock randomly where he says the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few it's just it's because they were the same voice actors or whatever the hell wait it was leonard nimoy you didn't know that no that would have been important <laughs> to know i was like okay that's just a dumbass <laughs> reference but they're not the same character where were those two black transformers that can't read from the second movie where'd they go i don't know probably the same place uh john campia put his impression of them where he says the n-word in his review for that movie <laughs> uh, probably yeah. in the garbage i don't know oh god that's shit was crazy yeah, yeah. they're two hood and words crazy <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe it. We'll never forget it. Um, anyway. You know, I was trying to explain the twins to somebody. And Carly gives Megatron a pep talk. Yeah, that was weird. But like, again, <laughs> if, if it was Megan Fox, it would have been interesting because Megan Fox has a history with Megatron. Carly doesn't know this guy. Two very boring minutes later. This movie feels genuinely large in scale from the tall buildings, the mm -hmm. ton of extras, the real life locations, and also the production design, especially in the third act, is just really well done. Like the debris is really convenient 
convincing and detailed and it just looks like a professionally like well-made movie unlike some movies we'll talk about later in this decade but uh you got anything else you want to say uh no i love this movie and it's great a tier the highest grossing film of the year was uh harry potter and the deathly hallows part two which made 1.3 billion dollars worldwide 381 million dollars domestic and 960.5 million dollars foreign harry potter and the deathly hallows part two d tier Ooh, d tier i'm putting it in the c tier okay <laughs> <laughs> like the previous movie this movie is boring i don't care it's <laughs> oh i don't like harry potter at all everybody's always like oh fucking harry potter so great these movies are boring i don't understand <laughs> it's so weird like i get the world building is fun but everything is executed so poorly i feel like the final battle with just like the beams firing at each other i was like this is it this is what all everybody loves just a beam battle like in dragon ball z it's it's boring can we talk about that really quick aren't they supposed to be wizards <laughs> like yeah, right they, so, like, like they have they learned all of these spells to do whatever and all they have is a beam like you can't it's so stupid you know what's crazy <laughs> avengers infinity war has a more creative fight with magic than this movie does a marvel <laughs> yeah, movie right? wait a second wait a second they are literally <laughs> wizards with a magic wand and they can like turn themselves into other people and do all these things <laughs> i was anticipating what you were gonna say because i remember in the last video you were like i'm pretty sure part two is the good one so we'll see but it would have worked maybe if part two and part one were just one movie and it was just the deathly hallows because people were waiting for it there are some cool ideas in here though like i'm not gonna like hate on it entirely the curse in the vault room in the bank where everything they touch uh, yeah. multiplies really cool mm -hmm. looks pretty damn good at least from uh you know the rip that i had because apparently this film owned by warner brothers isn't on hbo max anymore for some reason <laughs> that's weird the reveal of snape is really good it actually got me kind of emotional i like that that was nice hermione is now kind of an adult in this movie and david yates is like yeah let's do a cleavage shot of hermione in the beginning of the film yeah. when she falls from the mine cart mm -hmm. yuck when they shot the chamber of secrets in the second film i'm pretty sure if i remember correctly the chamber of secrets was a set like they made a set out of the chamber of secrets but here it's just a cgi muddy mess <laughs> but uh going back to what you said about the wand fighting they're also used like guns like they're just guns <laughs> yeah they are it's not original it feels very human does that make sense like it feels like someone didn't think outside of the box basically it feels like movie shit yeah they might as well just get real guns honestly like <laughs> what the hell <laughs> at least our schools don't have shootings <laughs> but in this oh this school did have shootings yeah <laughs> <laughs> take that the british yeah exactly <laughs> albus severus potter as a name is really silly <laughs> they made a big deal about the three deathly hallows coming together in part one but it doesn't really happen in part two why would you make a big deal about it if you weren't gonna put all three deathly hallows together don't really care for this movie shitty ending i don't really care for harry potter in general well dnf tier are stacked brother <laughs> <laughs> it's only gonna get worse from here brother i don't know how many movies are gonna be in the a or the s tier throughout this series but at least for this decade it's <laughs> it's gonna take a lot for me to put something up there i am so sorry but we'll see i don't know 2012 is a new year um you can look up what the next year's movies are gonna be on box office mojo uh yeah so you'll know i don't remember but i know that the hobbit is one of them so that'll be fun do you he said do you remember the number one movie because i do oh it's the dark knight rises isn't it or no it's the avengers oh god okay <laughs> wow no marvel movie made it to the top 10 even though there were a couple marvel movies that came out well 2012 is when everything changed so yeah true and everyone hogged out <laughs> yeah basically if you enjoyed this video hit the like button if you agree or disagree tell us in the comments subscribe if you haven't already share with your friends do all the things 2012 is the next video in this series watch the movies or don't don't care and uh yeah bye bye you have to get past the avengers and marvel shit at some point Okay, other people make movies.